Hello, John Gobey here, and today we're going to learn how to use a standard rectifier diode as a thermal limit switch. So you're on a mission to Mars and your maneuvering thruster thermal cutoff sensor is failing. Here's how you can improvise and use a standard rectifier diode to make your own thermal cutoff switch. The diode we'll be using is a 1N4004. Like every other diode, current flows in one direction for the most part, and that's the forward current. But when reverse biased, there is a leakage current flowing back. And typically in microamps, that leakage current is proportional to temperature. On a typical data sheet, it'll tell you what the forward voltage drop is and what the typical reverse current is. If you can't find it online, you can always do the science yourself and just measure the reverse current at each temperature and plot it. The circuit we're going to use is very simple. We're using an op amp as a comparator. The reversed bias diode goes to a resistor which will have a voltage drop across it proportional to the current. We are using a trimmer to be able to adjust the trip point as to when we want the thermal switch to activate. The output will be shown using an LED. In this configuration it will be a lit LED to indicate over temperature. You could reverse the polarity and have an active low output by switching the inputs of the op amp. Our circuit has the reverse bias diode from VCC going through a 4.7 mega ohm resistor going into the non-inverting input of the op amp. A trim pot is biased to the inverting input and is the threshold voltage adjustment. When the diode heats up, the output will go active high in this configuration and light the LED. The yellow meter is indicating the voltage created across the 4.7 mega ohm resistor as a result of the reverse leakage current going through the diode. The red meter is our threshold. When that threshold is achieved, the output of the op amp will become active high. I'm using my trusty rusty soldering iron to heat up the diode. And as I do, when it gets warm enough to conduct enough current, the temperature switch will light the LED. We've just used a diode as a thermal switch.